This call is being recorded. Okay, are we ready? Yes, we're ready to go. We're ready to go. Hey, y'all. Uh, tonight, we're going to talk about spiritual adjustment. And that's really um, another word for the transformation of our mind. Now, so many people know this part. We are a three-part person. We have got the spirit, the body, and the mind. Now, the brain is included with the body. The mind and the brain are two separate things. The, the spirit, of course, and the body, that's pretty well that our body is our physical being, which includes our brain. If you, if you separate the brain from the body, it does nothing. So if you have a picture of a brain on a plate, and then you have a picture of our spirit, the mind is in between because Without the mind and the spirit, the brain doesn't function. It does nothing. But guess what? Thank you, Jesus. Minus the brain with our spirit and our mind, which you can say it's the soul, we still live. Thank you, Jesus, because of Christ. So what this is really about is understanding how powerful and how much control we have over affecting our brain or as it's scripturally stated the carnal mind okay you've got the spiritual mind you got the carnal mind the mind has a foot in the spirit and a foot in the brain and so things go back and forth there's things that we get from from the physical world that come in to our mind which include that it, it includes our intellect our emotions all the things we know as a soul but our thoughts are physical and they come into our mind as well. And so taking our thoughts captive renews the brain. It renews the mind and renews the brain. And so let me read just a couple scriptures here. Acts 14, one through three. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews. And so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles. And these unbelieving Jews made their minds evil, affected against the brethren. See, they made their minds, they affected, they set their minds to evil. Romans 8, 4 through 6, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So carnally minded is taking in information about the physical into our minds and these would be hatred you know anything that's physical and not spiritual we take into our mind allow it to affect the brain that's why 
And here we go with Romans 12. And we're going to verse 2. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The whole verse. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Here is, and let me just state this. When I first started learning this in order to walk it out about two year, two or three years ago, um, I never heard of Carolyn Leaf. Now, I heard about Carolyn Leaf about six months ago, listened to a short little snippet, thought, okay, that's awesome. I'll let the intellectuals listen to her. Okay, well, then this weekend, right before I'm supposed to teach this class, I hear, I listen to an entire teaching of her called De Detoxifying the Brain. And it confirmed what I have been believing. It confirmed scriptures of what, of what I had already learned. But the beauty about it was she had the science to back stuff up. One thing, and this is going to be a little bit in her language. One thing that she talks about is how. What you think in your mind directly affects the brain. And it, she uses trees. She uses a dead tree and she uses a green, happy, healthy tree. And the thing is this, is what is so amazing is she states 75 to 98% of all diseases come from our brain. They come from our thought process. They come from what we think. That is why we have to renew our mind. And she goes in depth and shows how negative thoughts start decaying the brain right then and there. So, we are transformed by our thoughts, our Holy Spirit-led spiritual thoughts renews our mind, which brings life to our brain. And that is so amazing. Now, I have believed that it had a huge consequence I have talked about numerous times uh, how we need to take all of our thoughts captive. And this just drove that home to me so much that what we speak and what we think and what is in our heart actually when it is spiritual it rejuvenates the brain. It brings, she calls them poodles, uh, mushrooms, and lollipops. It starts growing vibrant. And that's what we're looking for. And that's what causes us to walk out a spiritual life. We are made perfect. And if we're not walking a spiritual sanctified life, it is because we have not taken our thoughts captive. We have full control. And another mind blowing thing that she states is the negative thoughts. The Lord is so merciful. 
that the most hardened criminal, even myself, when I was an atheist and pretty bad, um, the negative stuff could only affect 2% of your brain. God put that limit on, no matter how evil the person seems to be, guess what? There is expectation for all of us. We can change. That isn't who we are, that is who we have become. And we made ourselves that. So with the Holy Spirit, we can change ourselves. And notice I say with the Holy Spirit, because without the Holy Spirit, it does not have the power and the authority. It does not have the power of love, of Christ's love for us. So, let me scroll down here to, here we go, 2 Corinthians 10.5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Paul knew what he was talking about. We have to bring every thought captive and bring it to the obedience of Christ. Now, in Philippians 4, 7 through 9, Paul tells us what to think about. Here we go, starting in seven. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise think on these things so this is what we're supposed to be thinking about this is how we renew our minds we reach in any sort of decision we have a point where we're neutral, where we can either go to the right, which I'm saying the right side's good, and the left, left side's bad. Okay, it's in that split second, our mind makes the choice, and we always have a choice. And so when we think, our body goes where our thoughts are. What, where our focus is. So when we focus in on the lovely, the things of good report, the virtuous things, the praises of our Lord, our mind will automatically go towards there. Our mind, our soul, is supposed to enslave our brain. Our spirit, I said we have one foot in the spirit and one foot in the brain is what our soul has. So things flow from the spirit to the mind. Things are coming from the outside into the brain with our physical senses. So we have a choice which to grab a hold of. We grab, a, we grab a hold of it, decide if it's sanctified, if it is, we keep it to the obedience of Christ. If it ain't, we get rid of it and replace it with scripture, with truth. And so what kind of threw me for a loop was <laughs> how awesome Carolyn Leaf is, I would recommend that you listen to her. Um, now coming from 
she is so very good at bringing everything from science and showing scripture with it. And here's one thing that I really love is she, she hits on quantum physics, which I actually studied a little bit. And to me, in which she confirms this, to me, quantum physics is Christ. It is the father. He created, he created all things. That's just man's name for it. In quantum physics, there is no time, space, or distance. That's the same thing with our Lord. In him, we have no time, space, or distance. Okay, so say we have unforgiveness. If we have unforgiveness, then if that person we have unforgiveness towards thinks about us, it is as if they're standing right in front of us, insulting us and damaging our brains. That is why, once again, Jesus and Paul we're so correct in telling us, do not be in unforgiveness. And James, uh, once we forgive the person, which is not holding them spiritually responsible, we sever the negative connection. We are all connected because we are all made in the image of God. And so we are all connected. We can be connected negatively or positively. And so when we are connected negatively, we forgive the person, we sever the negative connection. Now, then we can speak life and blessings. And when we speak life or blessings, although they still have a choice, but we are blessing them. The same thing works when, when we speak healing, it is like we are applying jumper cables from our spirit and from our new mind to that person and bam, then they get healed. And then we continue to speak life over them so they continue to renew their minds. Now, that's one thing she talks about 21 days, well, actually, told 63 days to concrete, to take all the sin habits away and all of that stuff. Um, I think that's a very good program. Nothing against it. Um, I don't, for me personally, if we're renewing our minds with scripture and we're staying in scripture, submitting it to our heart, renewing our minds, we are concreting it. Now, her 21 day program, from what I've seen, is awesome. But myself, I like the instantaneous still. So while I'm in full support of the 21-day system, her teaching is awesome. We can jumpstart things. We can jumpstart the right direction because we're expecting it to happen now. And then we continue to renew our mind. And how do we jumpstart it? simply by focusing on scripture on any one of the awesome scripture my personal one of my favorites is and so therefore raise the shield of faith that will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked that's one of them i love um i also love that we are not given a spirit of 
fear, but a sound mind, which she uses frequently. Um, the more we renew our mind and are aware of what's going on in our brain, that our mind is in fact changing our brain. And most people think the brain's a computer and unchangeable. Scientifically, she proves it's changeable. Now, to me, I always thought of it as a computer, yes. But a computer that you could change a program with and renewing your mind. So, I wasn't. I wasn't a hundred percent wrong. I was 99.9% .9 right. Uh, but that is the thing is we, by our thoughts, created who we are so we can change who we are with the Holy Spirit. And we are to be constantly, we are to be prayerful day and night. Communication with the Holy Spirit is ultimate. My favorite way is tongues. Is speaking in tongues. But these are the things. Speak to each other in prayers and songs. And so. A spiritual adjustment is really renewing our mind, taking control of our thoughts. I want you to get this good. This part. The devil. And this this is this is a not a complete quote. This is a tonified vote uh, quote from Carolyn. But Satan needs us in order to make evil substance. He needs us to accept the lies and the deceit. He is powerless. Demons are powerless. We need to get rid of the idea that they can attack us whenever they want, they can. Especially when we are renewing our minds. The only power they have is when we grab a hold of a lie. When we are not thinking with a renewed mind, our brain is decaying. When we are not thinking with a renewed mind to Christ, taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, then our brain is decaying but once again the lord makes it easier for us to renew our mind to his way of thinking then for that for us to keep those negative thoughts the sinful thoughts the evil thoughts it makes it harder for us to keep those evil thoughts than to renew our minds. And that is incredible. That's how I could be transformed so quickly at the time of my healing. Because he is that merciful. And so. I just want. Thank you all. Let's see here. Do is that how I do it? Okay. Um, I do want to do a, a quick exercise with, I guess, Diana and Diane. We'll do a quick little exercise. You both unmute. Unless you're asleep. If you're asleep, wake up. I'm here. I'm not asleep. <laughs> First of all, do either of you two have any questions?
Hey, I have a quick question. Uh oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> No, I mean, you know, isn't it great when you speak and you know that you've provoked someone to think? I love that. <laughs> um, so my question is, you were talking about tongues and how that's a really great way to get your mind, you know, in line and, and all that. And, and I agree. What do you think about um, interpreting your own tongues? I do it all the time. Okay, so tell me how this blesses you or how do you do this sometimes you when and i just ask because sometimes when we tell people we do it they just don't even know where to start you know what i mean they need like a step by step how do i do this and of course people are going to change and do it their own way but sometimes they need a start okay with me what happens and a lot of times um a lot of times when i'm reading scripture especially um, if it's a scripture that I haven't gotten a full revelation of, that I'm confused about or whatever, as I'm reading that, I'll start speaking in tongues. And a lot of times I read out loud. And so in my mind, I'm speaking tongues. I'm reading the words out loud. And then when I'm done, I was, I would just ask, Holy Spirit, show me what I was just saying, because I know that's coming from you. And then sometimes I will kind of distract myself because a lot of times it seems like if you're just sitting there and just waiting and then a thought comes and you think it's your own thought, or you think it could be from the enemy and you're not real sure. So a lot of times I'll continue reading. And then bam, something will hit me. And whether it's a picture uh, or whether it's another verse, a lot of times it's another scripture, then I'll go to that scripture. There are so many different ways the Holy Spirit communicates with us that we just have to be sensitive to it. And then the more renewed our mind is, the quicker we grab a hold of it. And the more we ask for interpretation, the easier we spot it. So does that help? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um... It just confirms that people need to know how to hear the voice of Holy Spirit. I mean, it's so important. It's critical these days, I believe, you know, that we learn to hear his voice so that we can, um, like you say, get revelation from the word, interpret our tongues. Um, if someone's having trouble hearing or they don't think they're hearing the Lord well, what would you suggest? Maybe can you give them a quick pointer? One thing that people, most people, are looking for son, daughter, this is what you do. Most of us are looking for that type of voice. We have to remember we're one spirit with the Lord. So the Holy Spirit is inside of our spirit. We are one spirit with the Lord. So he will communicate with us in the way that we can best understand. He knows whether we understand pictures the best. He knows, you know, a scripture. And so we don't need to look for that outside audible voice. It will be a gentle nudging a lot of times. It will just get be a feeling often and with a lot of people including myself in my chest i will get nudging i just uh some people call it intuition okay um i call it holy spirit and so the holy spirit is gentle is a gentleman and i don't know who i heard that first from but that's the truth Often the real, loud, stubborn, hardcore voices are the enemy, not the Holy Spirit. The gentle nudgings, 
the soft whispers, those are the Holy Spirit. You know, um, good, thanks. You, if my mic working right, it's um, to me, when I thought come to my mind, I, I think it's a whole spirit, because I wouldn't have thought that, and so that's what I think. Diana? I'm here. I'm sorry. Uh, I went to go get more water. Oh. Um. <laughs> Did you hear what Diane said? Because every time she talked, I was hearing static. Oh, no, Diane, say it again. Um, yeah, I think it was one mic. Um, but I wanted to know. Oh, I said, to, to me, Sometimes it, I like get a thought, and it's a thought that pops on my mind, and I wouldn't have thought that. So I know it's all spirit. Yeah, I have, I agree. She said that um, sometimes she just gets a thought that comes to her mind, and she knows that she wouldn't have thought that, and that it's the Holy Spirit. And I feel the same way, Diane. A lot of the times when I get a thought and, you know, and it's to do something that I wouldn't think to do, but it is a very good thing to do. Like it was really going to bless somebody. And I know it wasn't me <laughs> and the, and people, right. and then when you do it and people go, oh, thank you. You know, and you say, no, seriously, <laughs> it was the Lord. It wasn't me. I, and yeah. the thing, and see, if you both agree with this, the thing, when it is the Holy Spirit and, okay, a thought comes. All of a sudden, then at the same time, you will get this nudging, or this is me anyhow, I get a nudging to confirm it in my, in what I call my heart, uh, in my chest area, I will get a nudging and I would know right away it is the Holy Spirit. Does that make sense to either one of y'all? Yeah, that makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> it makes sense. Mm -hmm. But there's always a confirmation. I firmly believe there's always a confirmation. The Holy Spirit wants us to know it's him. Because yeah, he does sense. not want us to listen to the lies of the enemy. Okay, so do either one of you have any more questions? No, I'm fine. Are we None. gonna do the, are we gonna do the activation? Uh, yes. Chomping at this the is, bit over here. Let's go. <laughs> okay, this this is a real simple activation that I wanna do and actually the Holy Spirit prompted me to do this. Um I'm going to speak something, and neither one of you are allowed to think this, okay? Do not think this. This is practicing taking our thoughts captive, and I'm not going to tell you what to do. All I'm going to tell you, do not think it. Afterwards, I'm going to ask you if you thought it, tell me the truth, okay? Are y'all on board? Yeah, but uh, you on board, I'm Diana? I'm good. I'm good. All right. So right now I'm just speaking a nice banana split. Imagine the caramel oozing all on it. And then you got some coffee mocha stuff. 
just oozing all over it. It looks so pretty and so delicious. And then you've got the strawberries thrown in there on top. And then you've got some fudge. And then you top it off with some of that marble ice cream that's got all the different little flavors and all that. And then you put some whipped cream on top. And then you sprinkle it with some sugar. And I personally, I like the sparkly colored sugar. And so we're going to put the sparkly colored sugar on it. And so it's glittering nice. It's like the type you use on a cake. And so that would be our banana split. And you're not allowed to think about it. Okay. Now, that was just a short thing. Diana. Yes. Did you think about it? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I am. Did you think about it? Well, I pictured it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One more thing. I want to do one, one more thing here, and then I'll go into a short explanation. Do not do this action. Don't do it. Do not do this action. Cut your nose. Do not touch your nose. I'm telling you, do not touch your nose. Do not touch your nose. Do not touch your nose. Don't touch it. Diane, I see you going to touch your nose. Don't touch your nose. Diana, don't touch your nose. Your nose ain't itching. Don't worry about it. It's not itching. Don't itch your nose. Don't do it. Don't. Okay, y'all. Who touched their nose? Or who had to stop themselves from touching their nose? Yeah. I didn't touch my nose, though. But you had to stop yourself, right? Right. Exactly. Well, I, <laughs> I had to stop myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now here's Diana. Just stay unmuted. I keep having to clear my throat and cough and stuff, so I don't want to do that because it'll over oh, Jesus everything. Name be here. Okay. Yeah. The purpose of that exercise, and like I said, and I don't know if Carolyn does that or not. Um, that's something I've done it in the past. And the reason why you cannot get rid of thoughts. That's why Paul says, take your thoughts captive. You take them cap captive and then you replace them. So, for instance, with the banana split, you replace it with an apple. Well, let me get real. I would replace it with a cup of coffee. Okay. <laughs> but you replace thoughts. You don't try to get rid of them. When I was, well, what people would refer to as an alcoholic, when I was a heavy drinker, whatever, when I was Back in my atheist days, I would think about beer and liquor to not to not try to drink. You cannot get rid of a thought. I tried to get rid of the thought. It has to be replaced. Now, the touching your nose deal. And if I sat there and did that for like 20 minutes, everybody would touch their nose. But in action, once again, it starts with a thought. The thought would be, I'm not going to touch my nose. I'm not going to do that. But because it is still about the same action, and you're still focusing on that issue, Guess what you're going to do? 
You are going to do that. You could resist for only a period of time. So that is why we have to renew our minds, take our thoughts captive, replace the wicked or not so wicked because carnality is not necessarily wicked on the surface. But when we believe the physical over Christ, then that is carnality. That's focusing on the physical world, not on who we are in Christ. So I just did that short, quick little exercise to show everyone we replace our thoughts with as Paul stated, as I read earlier, things that are pure. Seek the things above, not the things on this earth. And so I'm praying, and when I say hope, I mean I am confidently expected this may help some of you out. So let's actively renew our minds. And since I heard Carolyn leave, or Dr. Carolyn Lee, when I'm when I'm renewing my mind, I just see p images of my my brain, the gray matter, just being refreshed, and those little whatever she called them, grandadines or whatever um, things, button up and just coming alive. And so, check Erin out. She's awesome. You know, she um, she's not huge on the instantaneous. She is huge on the renewing of the mind, which I love. But that's renewing the mind to the instantaneous, to the full blown out, believing only miracles as well. And Diana, that called go. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. I was wondering, uh, how was your third throat that happened? I'm, that feeling, I'm feeling better, but I'll all of a sudden have like a coughing fit. And then I'll go a few hours, okay, and then I'll have this coughing fit. So. Well, cough, go away, do not come back. Um, what did you all think about that exercise? thought it was good. I thought it, you know what I really liked about it? I liked the simplicity and the, it showed um, just how really um, vulnerable our minds can be. I don't think people right. realize. Right. You know, I, 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 let me just say something. <clears throat> My son used to say that commercials didn't work, but I used to tell him companies wouldn't spend billions of dollars if they didn't. Yeah. And they, right. We are so easily swayed by commercials, by visual, by hearing, just like you just did. Exactly. And that is why we need to renew our minds. We don't need to worry about it per se, although we want to watch what we put into our five physical senses. Absolutely. Um, but we don't have to be concerned about it when we're renewing our minds because our focus when we're renewing our minds, we got the power of the Holy Spirit flowing through us, and He is working in cooperation with us. And so then we get to a point where we don't have to think about it so hard, where it gets into our heart to where it just comes out because that's what we put there. And so. You know, it's huge important to really, really, really pay attention to what is coming in so we can take it captive and live the sanctified life. So, any more questions, comments, statements? You got anything else for us, Diana? What'd you say, Diane? I said, I like Carolyn Leaf. 
I do too. Um, She's good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like her a lot. I've got about, I think I have two of her books. Sometimes she, sometimes she too. Too intelligent. Okay, so you've read two of her books, Diana. Yeah. Um, does she mention anything about, and I'm just saying this at, well, in fact, let's close out, and then, uh, and th and then I'll ask you. We ain't, okay. I ain't got to do this on air. So. Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, let's pray. So, Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for what you're going to do with this sound file, Lord. Once it hits the internet, it can be anywhere, and you can bring anyone to it. And we just thank you for that opportunity, Lord, to share your word with those that need to hear it, that need to get an adjustment in their spirit, Lord. We just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.